Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshana. I am Dr. Anjali Sharma from University of Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss about the module Leonard Bichet Potentials from Paper Electromagnetic Theory. So from this module, students, you may get to know about the following things. First, the general nature of the wave equation. Second, Green's functions method of solving inhomogeneous wave equations. The solution of the wave equations for the electromagnetic field. Third, Leonard Richard potentials obtained as a solution of these waves equations. And the electromagnetic field tensors obtained from these potentials are also discussed. And lastly, the explicit expressions for the electric and magnetic field obtained from the field tensors. In this module, we consider the fields produced by a single charged particle or in fact a beam of particles moving along a given trajectory. This problem is of considerable interest and of practical importance in the context of high energy accelerators. In these machines, a beam of particles are accelerated to extremely high energy and then used to perform scattering experiments. This is one of the main experimental techniques in the study of high energy nuclear and particle physics. A particle or a beam of particles moving along a path constitutes a current which acts as a source of electric and magnetic field. The fields produced have the nature of radiation fields leading to the dissipation of energy by radiation. To study the fields and radiation produced by such accelerated charges, we have to solve the inhomogeneous Maxwell's equations. This is what we proceed to do now. Since the speeds involved are sometimes ultra-realistic and we begin with a covariant treatment of the problem. First step. Finding the potentials. Begin with the wave equation satisfied by the potentials A alpha due to source J alpha x in the Lorentz gauge is given as dl inversion operator box delta A beta is equals to mu naught J beta. Green's function for the wave equation. We first find the Green's function method to solve the wave equation. That is box delta d x comma x dash is equals to delta raised to power 4 x minus x dash. This implies a alpha x is equals to a alpha 1 x plus integral d 4 x dash d x minus x dash j alpha x dash. Here a alpha 1 is any solution of the homogeneous wave equation. This fixes the boundary conditions. In the absence of boundaries, Green's function can depend only on absolute value of z which is equals to x minus x dash. If dz is the required Green's function, then box delta dz is equals to delta 4z. Use the method of Fourier transforms. dz equals to 1 divided by 2 pi raised to power 4 into integral d4k dk e raised to power minus ikz and delta 4z equals to 1 divided by 2 pi raised to power 4 into integral d4k e raised to power minus ikz. So this implies that dk into minus k dot k is equals to 1 and dk is equals to minus 1 divided by k dot k and dz is equals to minus 1 divided by 2 pi whole raised to power 4 into integral d4 k e raised to power minus i k z divided by k dot k which is further equals to minus 1 divided by 2 pi whole raised to power 4 into integral d 3 k e raised to power i k z into integral d k naught into e raised to power minus i k naught z naught divided by k naught square minus chi square. k dot k is equals to k naught square minus k square 
which is further equals to k naught square minus chi square, where chi is equals to mod of k. The integrand has two simple poles at k naught is equals to plus minus k. The integral can be easily evaluated by the method of contour integration, wherein we consider k naught to be a complex variable. First, we'll select a suitable contour for the purpose. Note that the poles of this integral are both real. This means that the integral is ambiguous. It can be assigned any of several problems values depending on how we chose to evaluate it. Green's function with different behavior are obtained by choosing different contours of integration related to poles. Or equivalently, we can shift the poles away from the real axis by assigning a single imaginary part to k naught. In the end, we take the limit such that the poles return to the real axis. Let us choose the contour to be shifted slightly above the real axis. To open contours from minus infinity to plus infinity, we may close at infinity with a semicircle in the lower or upper half plane depending on the sign of z0 in the exponential. For z0 greater than the exponential, e raised to power minus i k0 z0 tends to infinity in the upper half plane and exponentially to 0 in the lower half plane. Therefore, in order to use the residue theorem, to evaluate the integral, the contour must be closed in the lower half plane. Similarly, for z0 less than 0, the contour has to be closed in the upper half plane. Thus, for z0 less than 0, the two singularity then lies out the contour since they have been shifted above the real axis and the integral is 0 here. Regarding k0 as a complex variable, the integral over the closed contour can be written as integral from minus infinity to plus infinity d k0 into e raised to power minus i z0 k0 divided by z0 square minus chi square, which is equal to limit epsilon tending to 0, then minus 2 pi i into real part of s into e raised to power minus iota z0 k0 divided by k0 minus chi minus i epsilon whole into k0 plus chi plus i epsilon is equal to minus 2 pi sine chi z0 divided by chi. So for z0 less than 0 we have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity d k0 e raised to power minus i z0 k0 divided by z0 square minus chi square equals to 0 which implies that dz is equals to theta z0 divided by 2 pi whole raised to power 3 into integral d3 k e raised to power i k dot z whole into sin chi z0 divided by chi. So now change over to spherical polar coordinates so that dz equals to theta z0 divided by 2 pi whole raised to power 3 into integral 0 to infinity chi square d chi into integral 0 to pi sin theta d theta into integral 0 to pi d phi e raised to pi i chi r cos theta sin z0 chi over chi and this is further equals to theta z0 divided by 2 pi square r into integral 0 to infinity d ki sin z0 chi into sin r chi where r is equals to mod of z which is, is equals to mod of x minus x dash. Next use integral representation of the delta function and we'll get drz equals to theta x0 minus x0 dash divided by 4 pi r equals to delta x0 minus x0 dash minus r 
minus delta of x naught minus x naught dash plus r and z equals to x minus x dash which implies that z naught equals to x naught minus x naught dash and mod of z equals to mod of x minus x dash equals to r. Finally, we notice that because of the theta function, x naught should be greater than x naught dash, which implies that x naught plus r should be greater than x naught dash, and therefore the second delta function does not contribute. So, thus dr x minus x dash equals to theta x naught minus x naught dash divided by 4 pi r into delta x naught minus x naught dash minus r, which is further equals to. 1 divided by 2 pi theta x naught minus x naught dash into delta x minus x dash square. Here suffix r on the Green's functions refers to retarded. This Green's function is called the retarded or casual Green's function because the source point time x naught dash is always earlier than the observation point time x naught. This is in accordance with the casualty, one of the fundamental principles of physics and the states that cause always precedes the effect. So, we had chosen the contour to be slightly below the real axis. The result would have been the advanced green function that is dAx minus x dash is equals to theta of minus x naught minus x naught dash divided by 4 pi r into delta of x naught minus x naught dash plus r whole equals to 1 divided by 2 pi theta of x naught dash minus x naught into delta x minus x dash square. The solution of interesting corresponding to the retarded Green's function is finally written as a alpha x equals to a alpha i n x plus mu naught into integral of d4 x dash dr x minus x dash into j alpha x dash where a in alpha x and a out alpha x are solutions of the homogeneous wave equation that is del a alpha is equals to zero. So now here the retarded Green's function is used. In the limit x naught tendings to minus infinity, the integral over sources vanishes, assuming the sources are localized in space and time because of the retarded nature of the Green's function. We see that the field potential A in alpha x has the interpretation of incident or incoming potential specified at x naught tends to minus infinity. Similarly, in other equation with the advanced Green's function, the homogeneous solution A out alpha x is the asymptotic outgoing potential specified for x naught tendings to plus infinity. The radiation fields are defined as the difference between the outgoing and the incoming fields. Leonard Richard Potentials We will now stick to the retarded Green's function, the one we need to calculate the fields for source consisting of a charge moving along a given trajectory. We begin with the expression for the four potential in terms of the Green's function. So, rho x dash t is equals to e delta x dash minus r t and j x dash t equals to e v into delta x dash minus r t. So, write position and velocity four vectors as function of proper time tau then j alpha x dash equals to e c into integral d tau v alpha tau del 4 into x dash minus r tau and a alpha x equals to mu naught integral d4 x dash into 1 divided by 2 pi into theta x naught minus x naught dash into delta of x minus x dash square into ec into 
इंटीग्रल डी टाउ बी अल्फा टाउ डेल फोर ऑफ एक्स डैच माइनस आर टाउ विच इज फर्दर इक्वल्स टू ई सी म्यू नॉट डिवाइडेड बाई टू पाई इन टू इंटीग्रल डी टाउ बी अल्फा टाउ थीटा एक्स नॉट माइनस आर नॉट टाउ इंटू डेल्टा ऑफ एक्स माइनस आर टाउ स्क्वायर द रिमेनिंग इंटीग्रल गेट्स कंट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम पॉइंट सेटिस्फाइंग एक्स माइनस आर टाउ स्क्वायर इज इक्वल्स टू जीरो दिस लाइट कंडीशन एंड द थीटा फंक्शन ensured that there is only one point tau not on the backward light cone that satisfies this condition on using the delta function relation delta of fx equals to summation over i of del x minus x dash divided by mod of df by dx of x minus xi so we obtain a alpha x equals to mu not ec divided by 2 pi into integral d tau into v alpha tau theta x not minus r not tau into del of tau minus tau not whole divided by d by d tau of x minus r tau whole square Further, d by d tau of x minus r tau whole square is equals to two of x minus r tau beta. d by d tau of x minus r tau beta equals to minus two into x minus r tau beta into v beta tau. And a alpha x equals to mu naught c divided by four pi into e v alpha. Tau divided by v into x minus r tau, with tau equals to tau naught. These potentials, in their various forms, are called Leonard's Wichert potentials. The familiar scalar and vector potentials. Tau naught is the solution of light cone condition, that is, x naught minus r naught tau naught equals to a mod of x minus r tau naught equals to r. Which implies that v of x minus r is equals to v not x not minus r not tau not minus v of x minus r tau not equals to gamma c r minus gamma v dot r equals to gamma c r into one minus beta dot n cap. Phi of x t is equals to mu not c square by four pi into e divided by r into one minus beta dot n cap r e t and a x t is equals to mu not c divided by four pi into e beta divided by r into one minus beta dot n cap r e t. The square bracket with the subscript r e t means the entire expression must be evaluated at the retarded time r not tau not equals to x not r. For non-relativistic motion, these reduce to the well-known forms for the scalar and vector potentials. The electromagnetic fields, that is, F alpha beta equals to del alpha a beta minus del beta a alpha can be obtained from any other form of a alpha that we have derived above but it is more convenient to begin from the other form that we started with the derivative del alpha acts on the space time coordinate x which appears inside the theta and delta functions let us look at the one of terms delta alpha a beta first So delta alpha a beta of x equals to e c mu naught by two pi into integral d tau u beta tau del alpha into theta x naught minus r naught tau into delta x minus r tau whole square and del alpha into theta x naught minus r naught tau is equals to zero for alpha equals to one two or three. And delta naught into theta x naught minus r naught tau equals to delta x naught minus r naught tau. Hence, del of alpha t 
थीटा एक्स नॉट माइनस आर नॉट टाउ इन टू डेल एक्स माइनस आर टा होल स्क्वेर इक्वल टू डेल एक्स नॉट माइनस आर नॉट टाउ इन टू डेल एक्स नॉट माइनस आर नॉट टा होल स्क्वेर माइनस आर स्क्वेर इक्वल टू डेल ऑफ माइनस आर स्क्वेर इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इम्प्लाइज दैट डेल आल्फा ए बीटा एक्स इक्वल्स टू ई सी म्यू नॉट बाय फोर बाय इन टू इंटीग्रल ऑफ डी टाउ वी बीटा टाउ थीटा ऑफ एक्स नॉट माइनस आर नॉट टाउ इन टू डेल आल्फा ऑफ डेल्टा एक्स माइनस आर टाउ होल स्क्वेर लेट एफ इज इक्वल्स टू एक्स माइनस आर टाउ होल स्क्वेर इक्वल्स टू एक्स माइनस आर टाउ रेस टू पा बीटा इन टू एक्स माइनस आर टाउ बीटा डेल आल्फा Delta f is equals to del alpha f of d by d f of del f equals to del alpha into f into d by d tau of del f into d tau by d f equals to del alpha f divided by d f by d tau into d by d tau of del f. Now del alpha f is equals to twice of x minus r tau alpha d f divided by d tau equals to minus 2 x minus r tau beta d r beta divided by d tau equals to minus 2 into v dot x minus r del alpha of delta f equals to minus of x minus r alpha divided by v x minus r Into d by d tau of delta f del alpha a beta x equals to minus e c mu divided by four pi into integral d tau v beta tau into theta x not minus r not tau into x minus r alpha divided by v dot x minus r into d by d tau of del into x minus r tau whole square. On doing the d tau integration by parts, we'll get del alpha a beta x equals to e c mu naught by four pi into integral d tau d by d tau of v beta tau theta x naught minus r naught tau into x minus r alpha divided by v into x minus r whole into del of x minus r tau whole square. As before, the derivative of the theta function yields delta function, which constrains the other delta function to del of minus r square. Since the origin is already excluded, this term does not contribute. So we have del alpha a beta x equals to e c mu naught divided by four pi into del of d tau into d by d tau of v beta tau. X minus r alpha divided by v dot x minus r into theta x not minus r not tau into delta x minus r tau whole square. This is the same equation with v alpha tending to d by d tau of x minus r alpha v beta tau divided by v dot x minus r. Hence, on the following, the same footsteps will get del alpha a beta x equals to e by v dot x minus r into d by d tau of x minus r alpha v beta tau divided by v dot x minus r. This implies that f alpha beta x equals to c mu naught by four pi into e by v dot x minus r. d by d tau of x minus r alpha v beta tau minus x minus r beta v alpha tau divided by v dot x minus r one last differentiation has to be done and the expression evaluated at the retarded time this result is beautifully covariant but not particularly transparent so here we are more used to the explicit e vector and b vector fields than the covariant form in the case of power radiated is given in terms of the pointing vector which is simply expressed in terms of e and b vector fields thus
from a practical point of view we should like to get explicit expressions for the e and b vector fields in terms of the velocity and acceleration of the particles to obtain the results in non covariant but more familiar form we'll perform the differentiation of the above equations and we'll get f alpha beta x equals to c mu not by 4 pi into e divided by v dot x minus r whole square into d by d tau of x minus r alpha v beta tau minus x minus r beta v alpha tau minus e divided by v dot x minus r whole square into x minus r alpha v beta tau minus x minus r beta v alpha tau into d by d tau of v dot x minus r so now x minus r raised to power alpha equals to r comma r n cap and v alpha equals to gamma c comma gamma c beta so dv not by d tau equals to gamma d by dt of gamma c equals to c gamma is to power 4 into beta dot beta dot dv by d tau is equals to gamma into d by dt of gamma v equals to c gamma is to power 4 into beta dot beta dot into beta plus c gamma square into beta dot d by d tau of v dot x minus r tau is equals to d by d tau of v alpha x minus r tau alpha equals to d v alpha by d tau x minus r alpha minus c square x minus r alpha dv alpha by d tau equals to r dv not divided by d tau minus r n cap dv divided by d tau is equals to r c gamma is to power 4 into beta dot beta dot into 1 minus n cap dot beta minus r c gamma square into n cap dot beta dot use all these expressions in the above equation and find the various components so e x t equals to e divided by 4 pi epsilon not into n cap minus beta divided by gamma square 1 minus beta dot n cap whole cube r square r e t plus e by 4 pi epsilon not into c Into n cap cross n cap minus beta cross beta dot divided by one minus beta dot n cap cube r r e t, and b is equal to one by c into n cap cross e r e t. The first term in e is velocity field. It falls off as one divided by r square. Typical of static fields. Second term is acceleration field. it falls off as 1 divided by r and typical of radiation fields only this part leads to radiation so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module we have learned about the general nature of wave equation the green's method of solving in homogeneous differential equation has been discussed here Green's functions for the wave equations in a covariant form is obtained and then solved by using the method of Fourier transforms. The four potential produced by the motion of a charged particle is called Leonard-Wichert potential has been obtained from the solution of the wave equation. The electromagnetic field tensor is also obtained from these potentials. and the explicit expressions for the electric and magnetic vector fields are obtained from the field tensors thank you